participation in the sufferings of Jesus Christ the last word of Jesus Christ was it is accomplished John 1930 what is accomplished the divine plan of salvation John 1928 and 30 is accomplished the lift of the life mission of Jesus the plan of salvation entrusted to Jesus by God the Father is fulfilled completed and accomplished as head of mystical body Jesus Christ objectively accomplished the salvation of humanity as members of mystical body subjectively we have to participate in his suffering being conformed to his death philippians 3:10 being conformed to his death means become like jesus by our suffering and death st paul uses the word participation in christ suffering means we have to become like christ sarupyam rupa sadrishya when paul speaks about participation in christ suffering he uses the word participation the word participation is koinonia also translated as communion or fellowship or partnership this idea of sharing in christ suffering is found throughout paul's writing and in the first epistle of peter although the vocabulary sometimes varies peter uses the same word that paul uses koinonia to describe our relation to christ sufferings but rejoice as in as much as you participate in the sufferings of christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed 1 peter 4:13 in colossians paul describes his sufferings as an apostle as a kind of continuation of christ's suffering offered for the sake of church now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you and I fulfill in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body which is a church Colossians 1:24 What might it mean to share in the sufferings of Christ Permit me to offer some thoughts around the following lines of thought sharing in Christ's painful obedience sharing in Christ's rejection sharing in Christ's love for God's broken world sharing in the story of Christ's suffering sharing in Christ's painful obedience the season of lent begins by remembering Christ 40 days fasting and temptation in the wilderness it ends with the commemoration of Christ's crucifixion and resurrection for the sake of his mission Jesus suffered privation throughout his ministry faithfulness faithfulness did not bring Jesus ease or comfort or worldly fulfillment The Son of Man had no place to lay his head. He surrendered his right as Son of God so that he could seek and save the lost. In Gethsemane and in on the cross, we see the death of his suffering. Peter reminds that 
we are called to follow Christ's example. To this you are you were called because Christ suffered for you leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 21. In the 18th century John Wesley called the members of his societies to periodically renew their covenant with God with these words Christ has many services to be done some are easy others are difficult some bring honor others bring reproach some are suitable to our natural inclinations and material interests others are contrary to both in some we pay we may please go christ and please ourselves in others we cannot please christ except by denying ourselves yet the power to do all these things is given to us in christ who strengthens us sharing in christ rejection Many people scorn Jesus and his message often with a great anger and violence. Throughout the gospels Jesus predicted that his disciples would suffer the same rejection that he himself suffered. Remember that I told you a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me they will persecute you also john 15:20 then they will hand you over to the tortured and will put you to death and you will be hated by all nations because of my name matthew 24:9 the story of the early church demonstrated the validity of Jesus prediction still today faithful christians suffer martyrdom at the hands of enemies of christ jesus so identifies with his brothers and sisters so that to mistreat christ followers is to mistreat christ himself whoever rejects you rejects me and whoever rejects me rejects him who sent me Luke 10:16 when god's people are faithfully representing christ in the world how the world welcomes or rejects church and its message is of an eternal significance sharing in christ's love for God's broken world. Twice the gospel tells us tell us Jesus wept. As he came near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, "If you even you had only recognized on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes indeed the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up ramparts around you and surround you and hem you in on every side they will crush you to the ground you and your children within you and they will not leave within you one stone upon another because you did not recognize the time of your visitation from God Luke 19:41 When Mary came before where Jesus was and saw him she knelt at his feet and said to him lord if you had been here 
my brother my brother would not have died when jesus saw her weeping and the jews who came with her also weeping he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved he said where have you laid him they said to him lord come and see jesus began to weep john 11:32 to 35 we are told that jesus wept for jerusalem whose time of judgment judgment was at hand and for the family of his friend lazarus who had died the way is broken by sin and death and the world's brokenness caused jesus pain the christian share christ's passion for grow christ god's broken world it was a passionate love for god's lost world that motivated jesus from the beginning for the son of man came to seek and to save the lost luke 19:10 Christ, christians share in christ suffering as they spend themselves for others as christ did for the sake of the lost christians know the joy of believing in jesus faith in christ brings hope for the perfection in all creation freedom from sin a new and loving spirit within and the abiding presence of god experience both within the community of faith and the heart of believer believing long for others to know the blessings of faith and they themselves have experience they share Christ's heartbreak and his passion for the world for the sake of others they are willing to pay the price that love demands sharing in the story of Christ's suffering The church is a community that tells the story of Jesus suffering in word and worship. The New Testament begins with four gospel that tell the one gospel of Jesus. Scholars sometimes describe the book, books as passion narratives with an extended introduction. The story of Jesus suffering and death are at the heart of the gospel story for much of the church history most believers encountered the story of Christ Christian worship not in private reading it, it is the assembly that the gospels are read and proclaimed it is also in the assembly that we gather around the table where Christ's suffering is proclaimed in an act of boldly worship. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 26. For Paul in an year of Christ suffering is at least in part the coin in year of Lord's suffer the church is also a community that tells a story of the crucified messiah to the world inviting all to unite with him in faith apostle peter describes himself as a witness of Christ's suffering. To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's suffering, who also will share in the glory to be revealed. 1 Peter 5.1 We too are 
Christ's witnesses, proclaiming not our own story, but the story of Christ and his suffering. The good news we bring to the world is not that our individual spiritual journeys, but the story of Christ crucified. The writings of the New Testament are the are the enduring apostolic witness to that story serving as a foundation and standard of church proclamation when christians tell the story of their lord suffering when their worship empowers them to live within that story and when they begin to see their lives to the lens of gospel narrative they are sharing in the fellowship of Christ's sufferings sharing the preaching of his suffering we have a duty to teach others the story and meaning of the cross just as Paul wrote to the Philippians about the sh- suffering in Christ's plan so he mentions you were suffering suffering in the gospel from the first day until now and i am very confident that he who began a good work in you will keep it going to the full until the day of Christ philippians 5 and 6 Jesus himself issued the great commission to his followers go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation anyone who believes and is immersed shall be saved anyone who does not believe will be condemned mark 16 15 and 16 jesus is calling us to share his work and take the message of the cross everywhere that people might believe and enter in his death and resurrection Romans 6 3 and 4 final thoughts as a participation in Christ's suffering to participation in the f- fellowship of Christ suffering is not just something we do our on our own to suffer with the Christ is to suffer with his, with in his church the church's current suffering is clearly visible in many parts of the world where the blood of martyrs is shed Christ still suffers Whenever Christ people suffer he suffers with them in all kinds of circumstances not just in the fields of martyrdom we are called to hell bear the suffering of our brothers and sisters in Christ the call is inherent in our baptism and in our welcome at the church table for the sake of the church and the world our lord still shares our suffering he calls those who belong to him to share in his suffering